All right, my friends, we are back. We are on our third demonstration regarding accordions. So if you're watching this in order, the first thing that we did is we made our Sweet Star accordion, which had this kind of origami element to it where the pages folded together. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that first because I think it's a good introduction. The second thing that we did, when you find it, was our continuous piece of paper as an accordion. So accordion structures are accordions because they go rrr, 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 like this, and like the musical instrument. And this is a continuous piece of paper. So we had a long piece of paper that we just folded. And in our last discussion, moments ago, we, uh, we did that. And we have a paper cover here. So we've got dark, or I should say a hard back cover. Paper is the decorative element that's protecting the cover itself. So underneath that is this board, which we know about, the Davy board. And this time we are going to be covering with book binding cloth. Book binding cloth is cloth that has a paper backing to it. So it makes it so that glue goes on nicely and doesn't seep through the fabric itself. We addressed this a little bit at the very end of our last discussion. Um, and you may have just, you may be watching the back to back, which is good if you are, because this leads to another thing. So in your packet of materials, you have pieces of paper and they're a little bit longer than they are high. So keep track of that. This should be approximately two inches high and two and a quarter inches wide. So we need to figure this out so that we can cut these or rather fold them in the same exact way. Um, so we can have tabs on the back of our pages like this. I'm gonna show that to you. So that our pages attach with one another. So on one side is the tab, right? That's the back side, theoretically. And this is the front side where we don't see a tab. So we're gonna make the tab and then the piece of paper is gonna just go in there and I'll show you, of course, how that works. This is very useful. If you have a long piece of paper and you want to attach another long piece of paper, you can just do one tab. And so you need to plan it so that it's the length of the paper plus a little bit that will glue onto the back of the piece of paper. Some people figure it out so that it's, you know, a quarter of an inch like we are gonna do, or half of an inch, or even the full piece of paper itself. So some people do that, it's totally up to you. Um, if you have a piece of paper that is really heavy, you will want a larger tab because you don't want it to pull apart very easily. But if it's something that's not too heavyweight like this, this is perfectly adequate. I would not do less than a quarter of an inch though. I would not do that. And if you've got a giant piece of paper, it makes sense that you would want to have a larger tab. So what we're doing is we're doing every single page, which, you know, might be, you know, I, I, I'm doing it so that you can, you, you know how to do it and you know how to do it really well, but there's no such thing as purity here. So it's not like you can't have two or three pages and then a tab on the back. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. I'm just doing this so that we are super thorough in our understanding of it. So this I've already cut. Now my pages, I want them to be two inches, right? Two inches by two inches is what I want. So this is two inches and a quarter on one side, all right? So I'm going to make my tab. It doesn't really matter which side I go to, frankly, because if it's like this, I can flip it back and forth. I can turn it up and side down. It doesn't really matter so much. What I am gonna do is I'm going to look at my ruler and I'm going to realize that this is two inches, right? I wanna double check that because it's sort of uh, tricky looking, but I know that it's two inches, but where's my other ruler? And, ah, ha, ha, this is my other ruler. And I just wanna make sure that this is two inches and I'm not wrong, it is two inches. Two inches it is. So that tells me if I know that this is two and a quarter, I could very simply put this on top of my paper, right? I'm making sure that the top edge here is lining up with one of those lines, okay? I'm making sure of that. And I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm going to make a crease here. So I'm gonna just, it's like I'm drawing with this, right? No pencil, 
no, 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 no. Don't use a pencil to mark it. This is the tool that you're gonna use. Pencil is smudgy and messy and you have to erase it later and why the heck use it if you don't have to? So here we go. Now, here's the thing. This is where this is gonna fold. I want my pages to be two inches. So that is why I'm using two inches. I'm not figuring out a quarter of an inch here. I'm not doing that. And the reason is, is because that crease is going to, it's gonna have its own thickness, okay? So this isn't some, you know, surgical tool. This is kind of thick. So if I make my crease on this side, it's gonna be slightly smaller. This side is gonna be slightly smaller, okay? Now, maybe that's not a big deal, but actually, if you're being really precise, it is a big deal. And we are super duper uh, fantastic with our accuracy. So when we can be, right? So this is two inches, I'm looking straight through it. I know that it's even because it's even with the top of the page and yoink, I make the crease. So I'm gonna do that with all my pages so I can zip through this, all right? Zip, 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 zip. All right, crunch. I'm in my studio today, which is such a messy place right now. I go through periods where I'm crazy busy and things get just shockingly messy. It's not big enough. I need like 15 more studios, but I have to make do. I like being in my studio. It's like my safe place. Nobody can get to me here unless I want them to. It's hot though, I gotta tell you. It's hot right now because I don't have air conditioning. The reason I don't have air conditioning is because so much of the sculpture I make, I need ventilation. <sighs> and for me to have ventilation, that means I can't really have air conditioning, right? I could, but you know, I'd suffocate in here. Okay, I'm doing all of these for some reason. I'm not sure if I really want them to be the, this to be this long, but why not? I don't know how many how many pages I gave you all off the top of my head. Probably this amount, right? I've got an extra one here. So two inches is what I am trying to measure. So let's say you have something that doesn't accommodate, you know, a clear ruler like that. Let's say it is 16 inches wide, right? If I want to be tabbing on the paper and I want the paper size to be consistent, all that means is I am gonna measure it. I always use this guy for my marking instead of pencil, but pencil might be, particularly if you've got an automatic pencil, like a carpenter's pencil, that you know, carpenters use like automatic pencils that go straight down. Anyway, you don't have to worry about getting that complicated, but my point is, is you can make a, ah, a tiny little mark, a tiny little mark, not a straight line that is gonna show up on your page and that you're gonna have to erase like crazy later, because that's just like, that's just no good. You don't want that. You wanna use as little material that you're gonna to have to clean up later as possible. So here we go. I'm gonna fold over all my little tabs, which is easy enough. I'm folding them over. So towards the inside of the paper. Now, when I start gluing these together, I'm gonna to have to flip some of my folds and that'll make sense in a few minutes when I show you. Okay, we might as well do this all at the same time. Ford Motors style. I was watching this thing on, uh, it's like a, it's um, Ken Burns, who is a famous documentarian, and he's done all kinds of really interesting documentaries. One, I've been watching one on World War II, and he was talking about how quickly we, as Americans, were able to make so many of the tanks and the planes and the things that we, we were able to contribute to World War II is because we had, you know, the Ford style of doing things. So instead of like making one thing from start to finish, you just make the same thing over and over again, which, you know, can be demoralizing as a worker because it's boring as heck, but makes you more accurate. So that's what I meant when I was saying 
for the assembly. Okay, so we've got this. We've got all these guys. They're all the same. Now, I might have measured some of these tabs wrong, and this is another reason to do it from, make your mark from the right-hand side. I don't know if that's gonna really make sense to refer to it the right-hand side, so it's always, yeah, I guess so, right-hand side, okay? Um, when I cut these out, I did my very best to make them all two and a quarter, but maybe the tab is slightly smaller or sli slightly wider, right? That is okay as long as my pages are the same size, right? So that's what I'm worried about. Okay, now we're gonna glue these guys together. Hello, Tab. Hello, Professor Fox. Let's see. Now, I could be careful, which is always a good idea to be careful. I could put a piece of paper right on top of here, and that would be smart. That would make me a better craftsperson. And I'm going to put some glue here. Boop, 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 boop. And I'm going to try not to drag it over. And I'm certainly going to move this away from this gluey spot. And I'm going to plop put this on top so that it comes up to the crease, right? Not on top. If I put it on top, I am stuck because I'm not gonna be able to fold this nicely. But here it is, super duper nice, right? Okay, I'm not gonna worry about this being a perfect accordion right now. I'm just gonna do my gluing. All right, so this looks darn good. So I'm gonna do my next one. Glue goes here. The tab is always gonna to go to the right, okay? So that we can remember not to do this, uh-oh, and lose our minds. That might happen to you, it's happened to me. And I think to myself, self, why are you so stupid? But, um, you know, that's me being unkind to myself. All right, I put a piece of paper on top of here, right, just to keep it clean. <sighs> and I'm moving that. I'm folding this over just so I don't have a gluey spot. Ah, oh, ah, oh. let's see, here we go. Lining this baby up, the tab is to the right. I'm not going on top of the crease, but rather just next to it, adjacent, because I need that crease to work. I need it to actually fold. I'm trying to keep this as even as I possibly can. I'm not a machine, all right, but I'm doing my best. This is the first time you're doing this. Maybe it won't be perfectly straight. The second time, maybe it won't be perfectly straight. The third time, you're gonna nail it, right? And so doing this, um, if you have a project, I suggest that you practice, all right? So you've already done one pass through with this. But it's amazing how much, how important practice is. When you can, uh, just feel confident that you knew, know something up in upside, downside, backside, parallel, whatever. Um, that confidence is like, uh, I don't know, it's metaphysically transferred to your book, but it just means that you can think about stuff that's more important than the basics. All right, glue, glue, glue. I love glue sticks. You know, I don't think we had glue sticks when I was a kid. We had just paste, delicious paste. And then when I was a, you know, like a slightly bigger kid, we had, um, oh, what did we have? We had that like glue that stank that probably killed a whole bunch of my uh, brain cells. What the heck was that called? Rubber cement, yeah. Yeah, bad stuff. All right, I'm, 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 I'm doing this freehand now, so I'm getting a little confident here, a little cocky. Let's hope I don't, I don't regret it. So here we go, I'm doing this, woo woo, it's looking good. I'm hoping that I'm doing this straight. I think I just moved that one, so I'm gonna try and make it straight. Here, uh-oh. That's the wrong size. Hmm. Uh-oh, this is two. Hmm. Maybe I got some of my papers mixed up. All right, well, that's the end of that, right? Okay, so I'm done with that. Um, if that's the case, if your pages are the wrong size, oh my goodness, I must apologize, but um, you can fix it. 
You can do your own. I don't think it's gonna be the case. Okay, so what do I have here? I have this extra tab, and I'm not gonna need that, right? So I could take my, my board here, and I could just take a razor and go, shunk, which would be the nicest, cleanest way of doing it. For expediency, since I don't have a razor right here, I'm just gonna cut this with my scissors and be very careful. All right, so I don't need the extra tab because I'm not using the tab to attach to the cover. So that's why. Um, I'm gonna fold this back and forth so it's a nice accordion. And for this, I need one page to go down, another page to go down. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is an even number, even number of pages that I need, okay, for this to work. All right, now we're gonna do the slightly more tricky business of gluing on the fabric to the board. Now we're gonna use a different glue for this. I think with something this small, we could use our glue stick. I think our fabric would be fine with that, but I want to give you the experience of using our PVA. So our PVA we're gonna use with the brush that was uh, provided for you. This is our glue brush. You must wash out Mr. Glue Brush or Mrs. Glue Brush, or Ms. Glue Brush, or I actually think this is a gender neutral brush, to be honest with you, because there's obviously nothing that would indicate anything except its beauty as a tool. Hello, brush. So this brush we're gonna use with this, and you must wash it. Even though this is a cheap brush, cheap brush, I want you to wash it because you only have one glue brush, right? You might as well use it over and over again. You might as well not be wasteful. So, PVA, let's give it a little shake. Hopefully you can open it easily. Woohoo! I opened mine with no problem. You saw I peeled off that blue tape. That was so it wouldn't leak. Loop. Scrape that off, put that back. And you should be able to get your brush in here perfectly. All right? Now, this is a wee little piece of fabric, so it might be overkill, this big brush. And if you have a smaller brush that you are more comfortable with, that's fine. Here is my fabric. My fabric has kind of a dark uh, paper backing, right? Which is gonna be hard for us to see. So I just wanna keep, I wanna warn you of that, okay? Some of you might have a lighter backed fabric because you all have different pieces. I took this brown because I thought it was probably the least appealing. Although, you know, it's a nice brown. But I'm gonna do exactly what I did with the paper, okay? So the decorative paper you call, I place this in the middle. Um, when I figured out this measurement, I made sure I had at least a half inch on either side. So let's say this is two inches. It's not, it's two and a quarter, I bet. Let's say, okay, let's say it's two and a quarter, which is what reality is. So I would add an inch, okay? If I had a bigger cover, I would add probably two inches on all sides so that I would have enough leeway to fold this over in a comfortable fashion. I don't want to make myself uncomfortable by making something really narrow and then I have to like ah, try to get it over and it's really unpleasant, okay? Life should be easy when you can make it easy. We've got enough difficult things to get to. All right, so I traced that. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there, all right? There it is. And I'm going to do the same old thing that I did with the others. I'm going to Make this measurement of the board, and I'm gonna make sure it's right at the corner and not over the corner, because I need one thickness here. And then when I cut it out, I'm going to cut to the right of the line so that I end up with, I hope, about an inch, or not an inch and a half, a board thickness and a half. That's what I'm aiming for. Cut, cut, cut. So this is exactly like we have done before. So this is the third time you've done this. Now, why is fabric more difficult than paper? And why does it need this other kind of glue? Here's the reason. This is harder to glue because it's heavier. And if you're doing a big piece, glue stick is just not gonna cut it, all right? You need the entire piece of fabric to stick evenly and securely to this board. And you don't want it to be glued over here just a little bit, glued over here just a little bit. It has to be the same, all right? It has to be uniform in order for this to function properly, all right? So we are using this 
because it is a stronger glue. It is also more archival than Mr. Glue Stick or Ms. Glue Stick or gender neutral glue stick. I think actually, <sighs> I think actually materials, I think it's safe to say they have no gender. All right, here we go. I remember every foreign language that I took, which I always failed my foreign languages because I'm particularly, particularly and shockingly untalented when it comes to learning foreign languages. But I remember words having their own um, gender, right? And being like, what the heck is that about? As if I'm not confused enough. Anyway, if you've studied foreign languages, which I, I suspect you've been forced to, I think it's a great thing if you're not completely untalented like I am. And believe me, it is about talent here and aptitude. It's not from lack of trying, let me tell you, or some like American hang up. It's from just sheer failure. Okay, here we are. We have cut this exactly like we did the decorative paper. We're gonna apply the glue in the same way. We're gonna have a glue surface here that we are ready to uh, jettison from our workspace when this is complete, right? This is what might happen. Our fabric might start to curl and papers do this too. And it is very, 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 very frustrating because it's hard to keep this from the glue getting onto surfaces that you don't want it to. The bad news about the glue, if it gets on a surface you don't want it to, uh-oh. The best you can hope for is later, after it's dry, to kind of boop, 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 flick it off. But man, oh man, you're not gonna be terribly successful with that. So try your best. If you get glue on the front of this, well, guess what? First time you've handled glue, it's to be expected, so don't you dare worry about it one bit. Okay, here we've got this. We're gonna scrape this off so we're sure not to have too much on here. This is a big old brush for this. Okay, sometimes I just go boop, 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 like that. So I don't have too much on here. And from the inside out, I'm ready for action. I'm not like, you know, my stuff isn't over here, but rather right here, ready to go. So boop, 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 boop. Oh my gosh, I can barely see my pencil marks now, but I'm not gonna let it freak me out. So I'm gonna lift this up. Ooh, goodbye, gluey piece of paper. And look, it's curling. I'm gonna lay it down as fast as I can as nicely as I can. And yes, I'm gonna put my board there. And even though I can't see it very well, I can certainly put it in the middle, right? I can figure that one out. Okay, so what's my next step here? Folding this over, right? And I'm using the paper, not my gluey fingers. I'm gonna fold that over. Oop. Now, if I put too much glue on, guess what? It's gonna squirt out and become a big problem. So try to put it on as thinly as possible with it still being present. Bottom, I'm gonna do, fold that over. There should be some overhang, we know. I can use my bone folder to fold that towards the middle, inside. Do that over here, inside, just flattening it. Trying not to put my gluey fingers on the fabric. So there's where we are. I'm gonna fold over the top and bottom. Again, if I took a long time, I need to add more glue. I'm gonna add more glue because we need this to stick. Fold over, flatten it down. Looking good, looking, looking, looking good. All right, so there it is. That's one cover, looks nice. Um, if something starts getting wrinkly or weird on you, which it probably won't in this situation, but going forward, you might encounter it. You can put your piece of paper on here and you can carefully flatten this out. If you do it too aggressively, sometimes you'll leave marks. So try not to do that. All right, I've got one of these done. So far, so good, right? Mm, more glue. Again, repeating the same process of scraping off the excess glue. Tip, 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 tip. So I have a little bit of glue on the, on the ends of my brush here. And then I'm going to 
boop, 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 put a thin layer on, but thorough, putting the glue on from the inside out like the rays of the sun so I don't drag glue underneath the edges. Yoink! Now I'm gonna get rid of this gluey piece of paper. You might say to yourself, well, that seems so wasteful, but guess what? If you don't do it, you are gonna deeply regret it. Okay, now plopping this baby down. I have a little bit of time to, uh, to move it around and make sure it's in the middle, which I think it is. If you have light colored uh, fabric, it's not really a big problem because you can see it, but I can't really see it. So I'm gonna use this to fold this over fold over. Oh, my paper is sticking together, so I guess it was gluey. Fold over. Little, uh-oh. I'm not worried about that. Do you see it? A little bit of glue there. It's right there where it's going to get covered up. Yay, that's good. Okay. Smush, smush, smush. The, the little overhang down. I think I made mine a little bit big. C'est la vie. Let us fold this over. Flat, flat, flatten. That's good. Flat, flat, flatten. Uh-oh, that's hanging over a little bit. I should have flattened that out a little bit more on the edge. What I can do now that it's still wet is I can kind of coax it to the reality I want it to live in. Yes, yes, yes. So that's better. And I also know that this part is primarily gonna get covered with my pages, right? There's just a little bit that I'm gonna really see here, okay? So, right, so that's what it's gonna be like. Even number of pages. Front page, back page is gonna get glued down. Now you may ask me, could I tab that down? And I would say, oh yes, you could. So, if you were to just put a tab here, which I, I can't show you that. Oh, maybe I could. Let's say you just wanted to tab it here, right? and then you have the rest of your piece of paper, you could do that. I don't recommend it because it's not particularly strong. I mean, it's not as strong as it should be. And then you have this to deal with, which is okay, because you could put some decorative paper on top of that that was cut, you know, just about a quarter of an inch smaller than the height of the board, or you could put more fabric down there. But I really think that just the pages looks better in my experience, but, there are options. You are an artist and you don't have to do things exactly as I show you when you do your project books, right? So I want you to use your artistic license for that. But this, you know, I'm just showing you what I consider to be the most expedient way of doing this. All right, let's see. I'm going to glue down my front and back pages. And because this is paper and not fabric, I'm gonna to switch to my glue stick. Why would I do that? Well, this is a pain in the neck. We learned this, but it also might make my paper all wavy because it's wet. This is a drier sort of material, which I'm gonna be able to apply and keep my paper flat more easily. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. So I have my fabric backed board. I'm going to place this in the center. So this isn't like a traditional book or Western book, I should say, where one, the book block is one side more than the other. This is right in the middle. So you can see it's the same, or I tried to make it the same on all sides. More glue. We're in the home stretch, everybody. Yay. Glue, 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 glue. Okay. There's a big blob, I better not have that. Why do I not want a blob? Because it squishes. That's why I'm against blobs. Squishes out. Goes out onto my nice, perfect fabric, or it makes my pages stick together, which is not what we want. Okay, this has been pressed down. I could do a little bit more of that. Again, I'm trying to avoid using my nasty fingers because I have glue on my fingers, so I don't want that. Press, but there it is. So the tabs are on the back, theoretically. Now, you might say to me, there is no back or front of your accordion book, and you know what? You would be right if that's the way you're conceiving of it. So some people think of the book like this. Some people think of the book as being a structural 
kind of sculpture, okay? So something that would sit out like this, or, you know, sit like this, or have some kind of presentation where the front and the back are equally important. And, you know, front and back, that's just, you know, a conceit that I'm putting upon this. So it might be that you have imagery on the back that needs to somehow incorporate those tabs. So that's just something you have to plan for. If that's something you're taking on, you have to plan for it. Um, as far as I'm doing this as my dummy book, I'm considering this to be the viewing side and this to be a non-viewing side. Um, so I'm not worried about it. I could, you know, I could have this all one color or have some kind of design that went through here or continue with the text on the back as well or have a different story on the back. So one thing happening here, one thing happening there. This side, of course, is going to be a little bit shorter because, you know, I've got these pages here if I wanted to use them from this side of the structure. But ah, that's totally up for you to decide. So we've made three different accordions so far. We've made one with a with a with folded paper, right? We did that in our first demonstration. In our second one, we had a continuous piece of paper with a decorative paper cover. And with this one, we had tabbed pages, each page tabbed, but we're remembering that we, you know, we could have continuous pieces of paper that have a little tab on them, right? And um, we have a fabric cover. The fabric covers have a, a satisfaction to them, right? They have kind of an authority of being, you know, this is important, this is a real book kind of feeling. Um, but they're nice. And in certain situations, you might prefer to have something like this or you might prefer fabric. It's just one of the options you have as a book artist. So my friends, we are done with accordions. What you needed to have done is followed along with me. And if you didn't do that, well, Watch this again and walk through it step by step, please. Wash your glue brush, because it's the only one you've got, my friend. And I've got to like make sure I don't, when I put this jar together, I don't end up gluing this together so I can't get it open again. If you do that, just run this under some hot water for a while and it'll come open for you. All right, friends, I hope you have a wonderful week. And next week, by Tuesday, there will be another demonstration posted. All right, so delighted to spend this time with you and I will see you soon. Bye.